I'm uh, really very happy to be here in uh, Nepopetrovsk. As I think you know, we're uh, sponsoring America Days here to include tonight and tomorrow night concerts by a very important and well-known Grammy-winning Zydeco band called, headed by Terence Simeon. It's called the Zydeco Experience. But this afternoon, I'm here on a more serious note. I'm here to give a speech on uh, U.S.-Ukraine relations. This year marks the 20th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between the United States and Ukraine. And it's a good time to reflect both on what we've accomplished together and our agenda for the future. In the spring of 1992, as Deputy Director of the new Office of New Independent States Affairs, the successor to the Office of Soviet Union Affairs, I was involved in the establishment of diplomatic ties between our two countries. From the beginning, we proceeded on the assumption that Ukraine, as an emerging democracy, would operate on a sense of shared values and goals. We sought to help Ukraine build a nation based on enduring democratic principles, a true market economy, and a rule of law that applied to all citizens equally. Today I serve as the American ambassador in Kyiv, and I will tell you that our approach to Ukraine has fundamentally not changed. The United States wants, as it has always wanted, what we believe Ukrainians themselves want for their country. First, a Ukraine that is independent, prosperous, and irreversibly democratic. A country that is modernizing as a European state. A transparent, inclusive Ukraine where a dynamic civil society is free to contribute to public life. A country which is open to investment and which welcomes international business. And finally, a Ukraine where all citizens, all citizens, enjoy the full protection of the rule of law. Now, modern Ukraine is still working to achieve many of these goals. And we are committed with our European allies and friends to helping the Ukrainian people reach these goals. We can help, but it must be the Ukrainian people themselves who build that successful modern nation that I believe every Ukrainian wants. President Obama summed it up well when he stated in his national security strategy in 2010, and here I'm quoting, building on European aspirations for greater integration, we are committed to partnering with a stronger European Union to advance our shared goals, especially in promoting democracy and prosperity in Eastern Euro European countries that are still completing their democratic transition. Ukraine is a very important part of that overall vision for Europe and a very important partner for the United States. If Ukraine can move in the direction of more democracy and prosperity, it will play a key role in creating the whole free and peaceful Europe that we have been supporting in this region for more than 20 years. To give a framework for that effort, the United States and Ukraine signed a strategic partnership charter on December the 19th, 2008. This has guided our bilateral agenda since then. The Charter's preamble contains the goals that I've mentioned before. The work plan includes five key areas of cooperation. First, support for each other's sovereignty, independence, territorial integrity, and inviolability of borders. Second, strengthening democracy. And the Charter states quite clearly, and I'm quoting here, our friendship comes from mutual understanding and appreciation for the shared belief that democracy is the chief guarantor of security, prosperity, and freedom. Third, strengthening our common commitment to improving defense and security and working together to combat the growing threat of the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction. Fourth, expanding our economic, trade, and energy cooperation. And fifth, increasing people-to-people -people and cultural exchanges. That's the program. That's the plan. 
So how are we doing? How is Ukraine doing? I think it's fair to say that a significant amount has been accomplished in the last 20 years. The days of the Soviet Union are gone and the new generations are taking their part in a changed Ukrainian society. The economy has improved and many Ukrainians enjoy a higher standard of living. And yet almost every Ukrainian I talk to says that so much more needs to be done. A recent independent poll showed that as of March 2012, 73% of Ukrainians thought the country was headed in the wrong direction. And this was true in nearly every region of the country. Ukrainians across the, the country identified three major problems, unemployment, corruption within state bodies, and low industrial production. Clearly, the people of the country want change, and they want serious reforms. Throughout the past 20 years, the United States has tried to support reforms in every area of this society through the targeted provision of more than $3 billion in aid. We continue our bilateral assistance efforts today through an array of different programs, from military exercises to improving border security fighting corruption, expanding trade, improving economic and energy efficiency, supporting judicial reform, and establishing a new criminal procedure code. We will continue these efforts, but again, I'll say it again, we can only help to the extent that the people and government of Ukraine want these changes made themselves. Let me take a closer look at four key areas of our strategic engagement security and defense cooperation, the firm establishment of democracy in Ukraine, economic and energy cooperation, and very importantly, our people-to-people -people exchanges. Let's look at the good that's been done and what rain, remains to be done on the road lying ahead. Now, we have a very active partnership in security and defense, including in nonproliferation. In July 2009, President Obama, speaking in Moscow, said the following. State sovereignty must be a cornerstone of international order. Just as all states should have the right to choose their leaders, states must have the right to borders that are secure and to their own foreign policies. Any system that cedes those rights will lead to anarchy. That is why this principle must apply to all nations, including Ukraine. This is why the United States joined Russia in December 2009 in reaffirming the security assurances that were provided to Ukraine in the 1994 Budapest Memorandum. The United States continues a robust program of military exercises with Ukrainian armed forces, and it continues to help the Ministry of Defense make the necessary reforms to field effective armed forces to protect the nation and, and participate in multinational peacekeeping forces worldwide. In the area of nonproliferation, we've had a very successful relationship. One of the major accomplishments of European peace in the last 24 years, 20 years was Ukraine's 1994 decision to remove all of its nuclear weapons, a goal it reached with the help of the United States and the international community. In 2010, President Yanukovych pledged to eliminate Ukraine's highly enriched uranium, or HEU as we call it. And as President Obama said recently at the second nuclear security summit in Seoul just a few weeks ago, Ukraine has met that commitment. The United States has provided, in an, as agreed, low enriched uranium to replace the high enriched uranium. And we are paying for the construction of a state-of-the-art, world-class nuclear accelerator in Kharkiv. This will allow nuclear, Ukrainian nuclear scientists to do cutting edge research and to produce radioactive isotopes, reducing the need to buy them from foreign suppliers. We have also continued our help in securing and safeguarding the Chernobyl site. Last year, on the 25th anniversary of the disaster, we pledged an additional $123 million on top of the $240 million we've previously announced to help remediate the situation at Chernobyl. As the largest single donor to the fund, we'll continue to work with Ukraine to complete this project as quickly as possible and secure the site for the long term. 
Our law enforcement cooperation has led to some remarkable successes. For example, listen to this example. Last November, Ukrainian criminals illegally accessed a U.S. company's bank account. They stole $485,000, and they sent the money to a bank in Ukraine. The company in the United States, when it realized what happened, immediately notified our embassy, and our FBI office was in touch with the cybercrime unit at the Ministry of Interior. They quickly moved and froze the funds, arrested the perpetrators, and returned the money to its rightful owner the next day. This is an example of the kind of cooperation in this dangerous trans transnational world that we live in that we in the United States very much value. We've also worked closely with the State Border Guard Service to reach the government's goal of transforming it from a military organization into a civilian law enforcement organization. Since 2004, the United States has invested millions of dollars in training and equipment, helping establish a new world-class training center in Cherkasy. This achievement and others have resulted in more secure Ukrainian borders. Now let me move to the next area, strengthening dem democratic institutions. Ukraine reached an important milestone regarding its fundamental orientation in 2011, when the government concluded terms with the EU for an association agreement and a deep and comprehensive free trade agreement. Both of these agreements were recently initialed, but remain unsigned until further democratic progress is demonstrated in Ukraine. Over the past 20 years, Ukraine has developed a pluralistic political system. As The Economist noted before the 2010 presidential elections, no one knew who would be the next president of Ukraine. That is rather unique among the nations of the post-Soviet world. But I think everyone would agree that much still needs to be done to cement the progress that has been made and not slide back into fraudulent practices which are not of the highest international standards. Ukraine has held several rounds of elections since independence. In 2005, people went to the streets in the Orange Revolution to overturn a stolen election and to create the conditions for a new election that truly reflected the will of the Ukrainian people. The presidential elections, by contrast, in 2010 were recognized as essentially free and fair. Sadly, the local elections of 2011 once again manifested numerous examples of fraud and could not be called successful. President Yanukovych has said Ukraine's upcoming parliamentary elections will showcase Ukraine's standing as a democratic country. We look forward to working with Ukraine to support truly fair and transparent elections. In looking at Ukraine's problems, none is greater than the abuse of the judicial system. The White House, the State Department, our Congress, and many other friends of American friends of Ukraine have joined European friends and allies in repeatedly criticizing the selective prosecution of former Prime Minister Timoshenko and members of her government. The rule of law is fundamental to the success of any modern democratic nation. All actors in a society, both individuals and businesses, must know that they have access to public justice when they believe they have been harmed. Even if they are consistent with every international norm and our models of justice, laws do not enforce themselves. A qualified and independent judiciary is critical to the protection of the fundamental rights of Ukraine's citizens and Ukraine's continued democratic and economic development. The government of Ukraine has passed some important reform laws on the civil service, free legal aid, countering corruption, trafficking in persons, and money laundering. The new criminal procedure code passed this month replaces the old Soviet prosecutorial-led system with a new adversarial system. These aren't perfect laws, but if they are properly implemented, they can go a long way to improving rule of law in Ukraine and assuring that the power structures serve the people and not the other way around. 